we have everything in Airtable all set up for our customer support base, we need to come over to Zapier to set up a simple zap that will email us each time a submission is received. Not only can it email us, but we can also set it up to email a confirmation to our customer that we receive their message as well. So what you're going to want to do is create an account in Zapier if you don't have one already and just hit make a zap. From there, you're going to select Airtable and that will bring you over here. We're going to select new record as our trigger event. We're going to choose our account. So if you've never been in Zapier before, you'll have to connect your Airtable account. But if you have and that's all set up, you can move on to this step. If not, just take a minute and go ahead and set that up. From there, we're going to set up a trigger. So for us, this is our customer support system. Maybe you've named the base something else and our table is customer feedback. From there, we've got this record. So let's go ahead and see our new record. Let's load some more. And let's check out this new record that we just pulled in. Great. So this is what we just submitted, a bug test report. It was low and this was our email, all of the information that we have here. From there, you're going to go ahead and hit continue. And now we're going to add email. You have a few options in Zapier when it comes to email. You can certainly set this to be Gmail. I like to just use send outbound email. It allows it to be provider agnostic. And so you can put in any email account here. But if you want to stick with Gmail, go ahead and pick that one. So we're going to choose uh, email by Zapier and send an outbound email. Hit continue. And from here, we're going to set up our action. This is kind of where all of the magic happens and you have a lot of ability to customize this as much as you want. So of course, this would be two is you know, whatever email address you're sending it to. If you have a internal email pool, that's great. If you have lots of different folks that you want to send it to, you can go ahead and do that here. If you are using this to also send an email to the customer who submitted the request, which is the example here, I would try and create some sort of alias that is a generic support if you don't want the internal company email addresses to be publicly exposed. So, um, you know, go ahead and set up an, an alias for support and put that in here. You're limited to five email addresses. Hopefully you have just one pool that all of these emails are going to. From there, you can create whatever subject you would like. You could certainly use these, uh, you know, build in subject lines or something that's a bit more explicit in your Airtable base to have that information here. For these purposes, I just put in support request submitted for, and then this would be your company, <laughs> whatever company you're using. And now we can write out our email. From there, I wrote out what is going to happen with the request. Remember, this email is going to our support inbox and we're going to copy in the person who submitted the request so they can see it was received by us and we are going to work on it as a company. So I kept this very generic that it will be assigned and reminded them if they didn't submit it to please let folks know. Again, you'd want to put in some sort of reachable email address then there. If that's not applicable to you, feel free to omit it. Make it whatever you would like. Add in a little bit more HTML, some basic pleasantries. And there's your email. From there, you have the ability to put an attachment here. Maybe that's a company logo that you're wanting to attach. Uh, for these purposes, I attach the same URL. So you could certainly leave that blank if you would like. The from, again, you want this to be whomever it is coming from. So maybe that is a particular team member and you could certainly pull that information in from Airtable. You could just write customer support at whatever company. Feel free to customize however you like. Reply to, if there is a reply to, you can go ahead and fill that out. If not, it'll come through as a no reply from Zapier, so no need to worry about that. And then I've CC'd the customer email address in here, as you can see. Customer account email here. So that they see, hey, we got your support ticket 
we're going to work on it. You could always leave the CC blank and just do a comma and put them up here as well. You could do this opposite and delete this out and then CC support at your company. Dot com. Whoops, make sure you spell that right. Okay, lots of different options here. I left force line breaks false and also red receipts. Feel free to turn that on. And then you go ahead and hit continue and that's where you get your test email. The email will come through like this. Take a look at it, see if it's what you like. If not, you can continue to play around with some different HTML and things like that. So you can see this came through as a no reply at Zapier. So they'll clearly be able to see they can't reply to this email. If you want to reply, go ahead and set that up here in the reply to. So now you have a completed customer support system, multiple views to look at it, and automatic notifications of when these support tickets are coming in, whether or not it's a feature or a bug request. I hope you found this useful and can't wait to see how you put it in action.